we are not born knowing how to use our sensory apparatus. We have to hook up. And, and that's, it's a good thing. Um, why do we do that? Why, why was that selected for? Probably because uh, each of us has to, has to hook up to our individual version of a sensory apparatus. So we have to learn how to see. We have to learn how to hear. We have to learn how to feel. We have to learn what these stimuli actually mean. So if you don't have high quality visual information provided to the brain at an early age, you can never learn how to see. Let's imagine that you, your eye is something like, something akin to a camera. And let's just imagine that that camera, instead of having a black interior, has a white interior. If it has a white interior, light comes in through the pupil, through the lens, aperture, and then it, it comes to the plate that you're gonna, you're gonna record your, your, uh, your photo, photograph on, but then it bounces all over the place and comes to a, a many other places as well on the same plate. So what do, you, what do you see? You see a complete blur. It is not a crisp image. Imagine that that occurs in a human being, and it does. That is called ocular albinism. And ocular albinism uh, it, it afflicts a, a large number of people. Um, albinos are unfortunately uh, incredibly um, incredibly discriminated against at, in many parts of the world. Uh, in, in any case, albinos have no pigment at the, uh, ocular albinos have no pigment at the back of their eyes. So they're li they, when light comes in, it hits the retina in multiple places. Light is supposed, light from one spot is ho supposed to hit the retina once and then be absorbed by the ocular melanins at the back, at the choroid, uh, in the choroid. Um, that doesn't happen with ocular uh, albinos. And so as a consequence, they have no high quality vision. And because they have no high quality vision, they can never learn to have high acuity vision. So this uh, influence of the first few years, their inability to see uh, high quality vision during the first few years uh, it is going to make, make it so that they will never see high acuity vision. Now, th they're not being corrected, but consider a different version of that. Consider a person with congenital, a congenital cataract. In the United States, a person born with a congenital cataract has that cataract, cataract taken out right away. Now, the cataract's out and they can see. They grow up and they have normal acuity vision. A person that uh, has a, is born with a congenital, a baby with a congenital cataract in a developing country that has no uh, resources to provide an operation for that baby, that baby, if you take that cataract out when they're 15 years old or 20 years old or even 10 years old or seven years old, it won't make a difference. They will never be able to see they have to have exposure to uh, high quality visual information in order to hook up their visual system, in order to correctly c interpret it. And so the, uh, this developmental disorder where if you can't learn to see during the, the critical period when we're, uh, when we're hooking up our visual system, you'll never learn to see uh, with high acuity this is called amblyopia. And, and th there are a, a variety of causes for amblyopia. There are, some of them are preventable, such as the congenital cataracts. Another one is um, if a baby does not have enough vitamin A, they are not going to learn how to see well. Um, uh, OK. And, and, and probably the most common one is uh, differently, different lengths of the, of the two eyes, so an anisometropia. So the two eyes are different lengths. That can lead to an amblyopia. I want to tell you a story which will illustrate this concept that you have to learn how to see. So this is the story of Mike May. It's told 
spectacularly well by Robert Curson in his book, Crashing Through, uh, a true story of risk, adventure, and the man who dared to see. So Mike May, the subject of, of Robert Curson's book, uh, was a child, um, and he was just over three years old when he had a chemical accident. So uh, a, a, there was a chemical explosion that blinded his eyes uh, by scarring his corneas beyond, uh, beyond repair. So at the, um, and, and so he was, a, he was an incredibly uh, accomplished um, person. He uh, was one of the leading blind skiers, okay? So he, he's skiing down these mountains with another skier in front of him. He's got a hand on this person, but he's a great skier. He's, I'm sure he's a better skier than I am, um, and, and I have my vision. Uh, so he, and he, he had all these uh, really interesting um, devices that were early versions of GPS devices that would help people, blind people, navigate um, in the world. When he was in his 30s, he was made aware that he could possibly have an operation that could correct his vision. He could have a cornea transplant. And he thought about it and thought about it, and in the end, he decided to do it. It was a, it, I think it was a difficult choice for him. Um, and I, I also think that, uh, on balance, he, he would say that it worked out well for him. So he, he has this corneal transplant, and uh, the day that he goes home, the, the bandages come off and he com goes home. He's outside with his kids. He can see colors right away. He remembers the colors. He can see colors. He can name the colors. And he's playing with his kids, and they kick a ball, and the ball goes up, and he grabs the ball. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you? What part of the visual system, extra strike system is working? Well, the visual stream is working. He's able to see motion and to get where that, uh, where that ball is going and to grab it with his hands. On the other hand, can he recognize his wife? No. Can he, after a year of seeing, he's never seen his wife before, so when eyes open, obviously he's not gonna recognize her. But a year later, five years later, can he recognize her? No. Can he recognize his children five or 10 years later? No. Can he tell whether a person is a male or a female? He can, but he does it using extreme, using logic. He thinks through it, and a few seconds later, he can figure out whether that's a man or a woman. He can't, you, he has no, uh, no automatic visual processing that allows him to understand and interpret faces. So he has total prosopagnosia. Moreover, he can read, but, he, but to read, he needs his, his letters to be an inch high, and so six inches away, that big and six inches away, all right? That's a big letter. And if it's, if it's anything uh, less than that or farther away from that, he can't read it. So he has extremely pure, pure, poor acuity vision. Another example of his poor acuity or the, or the inability to understand um, uh, uh, what he, the, the, the form that he's looking at is that he cannot tell the difference between a crack in the sidewalk and a curb. They both seem to be lines, but he doesn't know that this is a, a line that I ignore and this is a line that I have to be careful of, I have to step down. Um, so this is a really fascinating read. It tells you how we learn to see and what happens if we don't learn to see. The bottom line is babies need to see if they have, if you want to give them any chance to be uh, uh, visual human, visual adults. All right. So that does it for for vision. It's been a. I hope it's been a fun ride. Um, we're going to go on to hearing.